Hi, everybody. I'm Sydney Lafora, and I'm joined with all of these lovely gents. Uh, both myself and Matt are part of the Ringwall Board of Directors, and we are responsible for bringing your blog content over to you. And in the spirit of today's this month's rather topic, we decided to give you a vlog, hence a video blog. So with that in mind, I will pass it over to Matt to ask the questions of our esteemed panel and give a little bit more insight on what this topic is all about. Over to you, Matt. Absolutely. Wow, I feel like this is so professional. Thank you, Sydney. Uh, <laughs> um, so I want to start by introducing everybody uh, over here. I, I don't know if it's my left on everybody's screen, but over here on my left is uh, I've got Brandy Joe over here. Wave, wave when I say your name. This is Brandy Joe. Hello. For everybody. <laughs> Richard Payton down here. I don't know if down on my, <laughs> and then uh, we have the writers uh, of the show down at the very bottom in my screen, uh, Vince and Matt down there. Hello, everybody. So we're just going to ask you guys a few questions today about creating digital contents in the world today and how that's going. So let's start uh, with Vince and Matt today. How does your creative process start when you're creating content digitally? Yeah, well, it's funny. <laughs> Digital content is the only kind of content that Matt and I have ever <laughs> done. We started our little journey into writing um, just based out of necessity. We were down and Matt and I really wanted to do something that could. we felt so far away. We're in Minnesota. There was no way that we could physically help the Ringwald um, at the beginning of the pandemic. So we thought this like stupid little <laughs> zoomy thing would be fun, a little reunion of some familiar characters when we started with Golden Girls. So virtual is kind of the only thing that we've done. We, we did those two small virtual shows, The Facts of Life and The Golden Girls Reunion. And those were easy because they were just based off Zoom and it was an easy process to get into. But then when we did the Misery parody, it was a much different ballgame. We were writing something that was going to be filmed cinematically for a virtual kind of thing. So like that was like kind of a crazy different direction. And then when we started on this project, we had a few different ideas. We had like another, another little television show that we were thinking about parodying and we were kind of big with it. We were in this misery mind where we were like, we can do anything virtually. But I think the pandemic played a bigger part in that, that we realized that we couldn't get eight people together and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's when we kind of decided to fuse these things together of talking to the board with what are the expectations we were trying to reach through virtual stuff, like how many is too many people and what are things, what are our limitations? We kind of started realizing that I couldn't just write and then I want this to happen in between Diane Bailey and Brandy Joe editing it and doing all the post-production work. There were things that I wanted to do that we could not do feasibly with the limitations that we have in the budget and stuff. So, so it's been like a fun collaborative effort of learning what what is capable and uh, and what is not really, yeah. Do you have anything else? No, I think that's a really <laughs> that's a really great insight into our creative process. But it's <laughs> through the virtual lens. he meant through the virtual lens, right? So I was trying to say, like, yeah. you know, we just have all these crazy ideas, and then we have to be told, well, that's not possible, really. So then we kind of go back to the to the drawing board, and we and we go from there. But yeah, right. Yeah, for sure. Oh my God, you're the worst. <laughs> I think it's I think it's interesting because the when you're when you're writing for the stage, normally you you don't necessarily collaborate with directors. Sometimes it's really just your creative mindset. And with virtual content, you are living in this world of essentially constraints that cannot be. There's there's like a no-go land almost and you you have to stay within the realm of of what's possible and i think when you're creating for the stage those those boundaries are a little more a little more flexible so i think that that's that's really interesting that you guys have been you've been really working with all of the parties to to make this particular vision come to life for sure but on the other hand i think that there's definitely and things that we learned you know through the zooms and misery and stuff like that there is things that we would never be able to do on the stage. So there's some things that Definitely. Diane and Joe, there's tricks that they have that 
we get to play with that would never ever be able to read or be possible on the stage. So it's been very fun finding those kind of things, things that, you know, little, the kind of branding our own little Ringwald style. We talked about this when we were yeah. conceptualizing this show. We've talked about hot dog legs and that's become <laughs> like such a big thing, like things that are so silly and stupid that you can only do through the lens of film that we've kind of adapted as like our personal and, and the Ringwald as a whole is like personal style of what we'd like to see in our further virtual productions, you know, as we continue. I think that's been the fun part, right? Like in the beginning it was, can we write a show, yeah. right? Like, I don't <laughs> I know. know that. Yeah. So we figure it out. And then each time there's been, because we've learned so much along the way, it's been a new challenge, which I think has also kept it fun. So each time you're learning something different of like what we did from Zoom, if we were to watch back Golden Girls to Misery, there was so much that we were able to learn along the way. And then so you start to kind of think about your creative process differently or how do you want to write the show or how you want the show to look, but we never would have been mm -hmm. able to do that six months ago when we started kind of thinking about writing shows in the early quarantine days. And so I think that's what's been even fun about this latest project is we knew going into it kind of what we wanted the end result to be or how the look and feel based on a show we had done. But now we were, we were aiming to do that. And before we had no idea. And so I think that's been kind of fun to alter the process around, oh, we think the end result could be this, cool. And so that's unlocked a lot to think of how to write the story, how to figure out the scenes, which has been fun. That's been the fun part. Each yeah. time it's been kind of a new learning or a different challenge for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It has been so cool to watch watch your writing grow and blossom throughout this entire process. It's grown from, you know, doing that like 10 minute uh, stuff with, with Golden Girls all the way up to, you know, <laughs> we did a, what, an, a little over an hour with Misery and, um, you know, and I don't think we, we have yet to, we have yet to say the name of what we're working on currently. So if you, <laughs> would you like to talk about it a little bit before, I, I know we're going to talk about it at the end, but would you at least like to say what we're, we're talking about here? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, you know, going back to the branding and like the Ringwald style, we, we knew that what we were going to write was going to be a parody. Like we're going to stick with what we know so that like we can stay in this vein. So we we're thinking of things that were in that lexicon of the golden girls and facts of life in that particular era. So we landed on um, Murder, She Wrote, which is of course like a very popular long running series starting Angela Lansbury. So, but we wanted to put a modern spin on it. So this show is called Murder, She Podcast, colon, <laughs> Baby One More Time because they are dealing with the disappearance, or maybe one more crime, I'm sorry, with the possible disappearance of Britney Spears, which is so crazy because we started conceptualizing the show in the summer, like last summer before Free Britney, the Free Britney was a thing, but before like the documentary and stuff. So that was just so interesting. We had a finished script and that documentary came out and we rewrote so much of the show because it just didn't, didn't feel right anymore. It didn't feel, we had the right tone because of all the stuff that had come out. So it's very interesting how we're so on the pulse. Like we knew. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know, you foresaw. <laughs> Well, truly, I, I am so excited to see how it comes out. And I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to viewing it. And, and I know I, I on the board and the rest of the board and everybody is going to really appreciate when it finally comes out. And, and we're just really excited to see it. So thank you, gents, for, for being here and for, for offering that perspective and for being so creative. It's, it's, it's wonderful. So thank you. Um, next up, we're going to talk a little bit to uh, Brandy Joe Plambeck, the one with That's the little hat there. It's you! <laughs> So my question for you, Randy Joe, is going to be, how do you see the future of theater? Do you see it as, as a mix of like digital content and physical content? What, what do you see, what direction do you see theater going in uh, from after 2021 and beyond? You know, I mean, I think, I'm not gonna speak for everyone, but I would imagine the majority of the world would like things to be back as they were. Which not to say there was no virtual theater whatsoever, because there still mm -hmm. were, you know, there still is Broadway HD. There still were avenues where you could see theater from your television screen and from YouTube and things like that. But I think that everyone wants things to be back where we're in the same room, sharing an experience, feeding off one another, both as performers and with the audiences there. Um, and the crew and the whole creative process is just so 
so much better when your energies are live and in one. So I think that's where everyone is just itching to be back at, which has been the fun part about the two productions we've now done um, with Have Yourself a Misery Little Christmas and Murder She Podcast to be able to evolve the scripts to have people in the same room, even though it is, I mean, filming a project is so much different than performing it in front of people. It It is um, still an exciting process, but it just is, a, it's a different it's a different vibe. Most, most definitely. I'm definitely more of a theater person than a film person. Um, (laughs) But I think everyone wants it back to how it was. And I think we're going to get there. But I think things will always be a little different. And I have a question. Yeah. I know this isn't my pockets, but I have a question that you said that and I didn't think about it. Like, would we, so like when we get back in person, let's say we're doing a, a homespun parody of something that we wrote that we have complete control over, would you ever consider filming it? And then after our run is concluded, putting it in something virtual so that people who couldn't make it to that show or didn't get a ticket or live in another state, like we own that property. Would this be something to merge in the future of, obviously there's rights and stuff that goes along with it, but if we write the shows, like we always have a parody or two a season, would we ever consider putting those things on online to make them available? I mean, they, I think it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love we, that idea. And I, I do think that that's one of the things too. It's been one of the really cool things about having shows curated and written by you guys is that it, you have this flexibility that producing a show that is written by external sources and has been done elsewhere. There's a lot, it's not that it can't be done, but there's lots of strings to it. I know that some people in here might be involved in other projects and dealing with that right now. Like it is, it's a, it's a different energy and it's, it's nice to have full control of that sort of thing. And I, I, I think that that's part of the interesting aspect of the future is what's the hybrid possibility because I think it's there and it's possible things I mean things will probably never be like they were because we've gone through that like it's it's going to be changed and I think only time can tell what will happen a hundred percent I just know that you know most people in the theatrical theatrical community are ready for to be able to have that magic of live theater with an audience um, and the energies that come with that. Yeah, I was just going to say the magic of being in the space with everyone. And like you said, just feeling the energy from from the audience, from your fellow castmates. That's definitely something that's missed. But I do think that one of the one of the benefits of virtual content is the accessibility, right? You're able to reach so many different audiences that perhaps may never have stepped foot in a theater before, before now. So in that respect, I think we've, we've perhaps, you know, moved forward in one direction. So maybe there is a way in the hybrid model of the future of, uh, to continue to utilize that avenue and, and, and that, and that audience that we've gained and, you know, move it into something in the future. So I don't know, but interesting stuff to think about. It, it is. And like Vince and Matt talked about with, you know, they had never written a show before the the quarantine parody of Golden Girls. Mm-hmm. Like they have evolved so much as playwrights and it's been so lovely to have them write things for us because they know us and their voices are so strong and funny. And it's so like, I, I can't write like that. And I just, I'm, I'm grateful for it. And I, Envy is not the right word because I'm not an envious person, but I, I'm just like in awe of what they do. But it's also, I've like picked up these skills that I didn't have before in regards to editing something and putting together and thinking about things in a different way that I never did before. So I'm grateful for this experience to have also grown and expanded as an artist in a different way, which, you know, you mm-hmm. no matter what happens, we as artists will evolve. And I think that's the whole thing is to not let something like the pandemic hold us back. We have to be able to roll with the punches and do things differently and grow and evolve. I think that's the whole 
like that's a part of art. It, it's going to constantly change and we're going to change with it. And that's just what we've shown. And we keep evolving even in our game, upping it up and, you know, raising the ante. That's a term, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, no, but you said it so perfectly. You said it so perfectly because I, for those of you that don't know, Joe wears about a thousand hats at the Ringwald. He he does, well, he does wear hats too. A thousand right? hats. <laughs> he is he he does technical stuff he is an actor he's a director he does a million he does all of our digital and social media stuff he wears a million different hats so how you know you want to quickly talk about um how that's been to add sort of that other hat to you you know you, you're you're working with diane bailey on on editing now and you're working you know how has that been? You know, what is what is that like for you to add sort of that next hat to your your group of hats? It's been fun because I've always had like a little bit of like editing, like just putting together a video or whatever. But I've learned so much from Diane because she is truly extremely talented at what she does with video work. And so I've learned so much from her and she's been so great to teach me things. And, and it, it's exciting to have that extra hat. It's also like, all right, well, now I have that. So now I have to, you know, do that as well. But like <laughs> being able to work with Diane on these projects has been so nice because I, I think both of us really appreciate the other in regards to not having to take on this gigantic project all by ourselves. Right. There's definitely like, she's very good at things that I have no idea how to do. So I'm kind of like, well, I can now kind of handle these other things. Can you focus on those? <laughs> so it's, it's been great and, and exciting. And, you know, like I was saying, I, I want to grow and evolve and, and it's been, a, it's been happening. So it's exciting. I mean, you guys have no idea. Like when he says grow and evolve, like there's so much modesty in that statement. Like I will take a shower and I always have these like ideas in the shower, which is weird. <laughs> But I call up Joe, and I can only imagine that when my phone comes, like when my name comes up on his phone, he's just like, oh my God. <laughs> okay, so like what if, and I'll just fucking say the weirdest thing in the whole world, and never does he say no. And maybe on the two times that he said, I don't think so, I get a text like an hour later that's like, I can do it, I can figure it out, I can like do this, I can learn. Like it is the most collaborative. I couldn't imagine having to like write a show for somebody else because every idea is like given the utmost respect, fully, fully, fully thought out and everything is, is possible. Like it's insane. It is, you are so, we, we I, I, I can say over and over and over again, we have one of the best teams, truly. Like it, it truly, we, I, I'm so thankful to be part of such an amazing team, you know, and, and Joe, you're a huge part of that. And, and Vince, but everybody everybody i we i can't say enough good things about all of you i love all of you dearly so thank you joe for for sharing with us i i really appreciate that and i i look forward to seeing all that editing you've been learning how to do and and i i'm just excited to see that growth so thank you joe thank you matt you're welcome now on to the ever famous sir richard payton <laughs> hello richard <laughs> hello. how are you I'm wonderful. You How were are just you? knighted. You were just knighted, just knighted by, me. <laughs> by me. <laughs> so Richard, tell me a little bit about how being in a digital production, a virtual production, you've you've done a you've done just a few things at the Ringwald. How that is different <laughs> than being in a traditional theatrical um, program? Well, um, like so many like everyone has stated, number one, I'm the obvious, the, the audience. Uh, you miss that that initial and immediate feedback, you know, especially when you're doing a comedy. Um, we, we thrive on laughter when we're creating these things. Um, and so now, you know, when we're, if, you're, if you make someone laugh when you're filming it, you know, you've ruined a take. So you gotta start over. Uh, <laughs> But I, what I do enjoy, especially when we did like the, the Zooms, um, for instance, the, the uh, Facts of Life, getting to create your environment is something new, you know, because now I'm in charge of essentially the set. Um, what's going on behind me and how does that fit in with what the character would have? Uh, I enjoyed being able to create that kind of thing um, because it's so collaborative. I, I got I to gotta find something to create with with other people and and talk about so uh, i i do miss that as well being able to create and craft moments uh, 
that's hard mm-hmm. to do uh, through a screen. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And and I I again, you are somebody I can gush about for days. I've always looked up to you, and I I truly I I think your your energy is infectious, and it's it's just it's so wonderful to see the work that you've been doing, even in this time of you know who knows what's going on. Um, and I, I I just am so. It's it's always been awesome to I've always loved to watch you on stage because because like I said of, of that energy and I I think that you bring that to the the camera as well, um, so truly I mean it I I could again I could gush about you for days, but but Richard I um no no I'm, go I'm ahead so thankful you <laughs> yeah, go ahead Don't you, want you want to keep going I could I will I oh my God yes Ooh, it's, it's hot in here isn't it. <laughs> okay um no one's a bigger fan of me than me so <laughs> which has been very helpful in these circumstances because if there's not an audience laughter uh, laughing at least uh i know i'm enjoying my performance <laughs> <laughs> it's true <laughs> Well, Richard, I am so excited to see what you have done here. Um, I, I just, I really look forward to the comedy that you've created and the energy that you bring uh, to everything that you do. So thank you for, for being here with us. Um, and and for you, honestly, truly, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Joe here. So Joe, can you tell us a little bit more about where we can uh, watch this upcoming production and yes. when it'll be out? Yeah, please do. So if you experienced Have Yourself a Misery Little Christmas, it's very similar, if not almost precisely the same. <laughs> Our website, uh, theringwall.com, they'll, there is a link there to get tickets for Murder, She Podcast, colon, dot, 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 baby, one more crime. And it will take you to our ticketing website, Simple Ticks. There's three giving levels, whatever you can and want to give. We're extremely grateful. And once you do that, come April 16th, you will be sent a link to watch the production on Vimeo. You'll also be sent a link for a virtual program. And tickets will be available tickets will be available from April 16th until May 2nd and then the production will be available to watch until May 10th so you essentially once you buy your ticket you get a link and that is good for a certain amount of time and the production is very similar to Misery in about length as well I I mean we're still in the process of editing it but it's probably roughly uh, 45 minutes to an hour and um it's very funny, very creative, and we're very excited for you to watch it. Oh, it's true. Thank you so much to all of you. I'm so thankful yes. that you all had a chance to be here with us. I'm actually going to turn it back over to Sydney here real quick so we can close this out. Back to you, Sydney. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> all right. And just to, just to echo, echo what Matt said, thank you all again. We really appreciate this time. And uh, I know the Ringwald has, has a history of really hitting the ball out of the park when it comes to digital content. So hopefully, hopefully our listeners learned a few things about what it's like to create digital content and also uh, got a little excited for what's to come in the middle of April. So with that, thank you all so much for joining. We will talk to you and hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.